Turing and von Neumann, let's start there. Some okay. of the most impactful, important humans who have ever lived in computing. Why were they wrong? So I worked with uh, Andy Gleason, who was Turing's counterpart. So just, just for background, if anybody doesn't know, Turing is credited with the modern architecture of computing, among uh, many other things. Uh, Andy Gleason was his US counterpart. And you might not have heard of Andy Gleason, but you might have heard of the Hilbert problems. And Andy Gleason solved the fifth one. So he was a really notable mathematician. Uh, during the war, he was Turing's counterpart. Then von Neumann is credited with the modern architecture of computing, and one of his students was Marvin Minsky. So I could ask Marvin what Johnny was thinking, and I could ask Andy what Alan was thinking. And what came out from that, what I came to appreciate as background, I never understood the difference between computer science and physical science. Mm -hmm. But Turing's machine, that's the foundation of modern computing, has a simple physics mistake, which is the head is distinct from the tape. So in the Turing machine, there's a head that programmatically moves and reads and writes a tape. The head is distinct from the tape, which means persistence of information is separate from interaction with information. Yeah. Then Von Neumann wrote deeply and beautifully about many things, but not computing. He wrote a horrible men memo called the first draft of a report on the EDVAC, which is how you program a very early computer. In it, he essentially roughly took Turing's architecture and built it into a machine. So the legacy of that is the computer somebody's using to watch this is spending much of its effort moving information from storage transist transistors to processing transistors, even though they have the same computational complexity. So in computer science, when you learn about computing, there's a ridiculous taxonomy of about 100 different models of computation, but they're all fictions. In physics, a patch of space occupies space. It stores state it takes time to transit, and you can interact. Th that is the only model of computation that's physical. Everything else is a fiction. So I, I really came to appreciate that a few years back when I did a keynote for the annual meeting of the supercomputer industry, and then went into the halls and spent time with the supercomputer builders and came to appreciate, oh, the, 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 let's see, if you're familiar with the movie The Metropolis, mm -hmm. uh, people would frolic upstairs in the gardens and down in the basement, people would move levers. Yes. And that's how computing exists today, that we pretend software is not physical, it's separate from hardware. And the whole canon of computer science is based on this fiction that bits aren't constrained by atoms, but all sorts of scaling issues in computing come from that boundary, but all sorts of opportunities come from that boundary. And so you can trace it all the way back to Turing's machine making this mistake between the head and the tape. Von Neumann, in, in, um, create, he never called it Von Neumann's architecture. He wrote about it in this dreadful memo. And then he wrote beautifully about other things we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. Now, to end a long answer, Turing and Von Neumann both knew this. So all of the canon of computer scientists credits them for what was never meant to be a computer architecture. Both Turing and Von Neumann ended their life studying exactly how software becomes hardware. So von Neumann studied self-reproducing automata, how a machine communicates its own construction. Uh, Turing studied morphogenesis, how genes give rise to form. They ended their life studying the embodiment of computation, something that's been forgotten by the canon of computing, but developed sort of off to the sides by a really interesting lineage. So there's no distinction between the head and the tape, between the computer and the computation, it is all computation. Right. So uh, I never understood the difference between computer science and physical science. And working at that boundary helped lead to things like my lab was part of doing, with a number of interesting collaborators, the first faster than classical quantum uh, computations. Uh, we were part of a collaboration creating the minimal synthetic organism where you design life in a mm -hmm. computer. Those both involve domains where you just can't separate hardware from software. The embodiment of comp you know, computation is embodied in these really profound ways. 